And good morning, everyone. This is Saga Live, day number 26 of our morning routine show. I am so glad to have you here. Already been chatting with a couple of friends, making sure that we get everything together. We're going to jump right into these routines. We really want to just start making these so normal that we don't have to build too much into them, that we can really just work on making them happen so that we have this nice little macro micro list of tasks we can just check off first thing in the morning and make sure that we start our day efficiently and effectively so that we have that whole discipline equals freedom idea of just setting things up so that we can knock them down and move on to the next thing and build further from there. So for instance, today with my Panda Planner Pro, which I'm not being endorsed by, but I endorse it, uh, I already have today's day pretty much laid out. Uh, so now that I'm a few weeks into the morning routine, now that I'm a few weeks into figuring out what I need to do for myself, I've come to this realization that if I don't start my writing the night before, that page stays blank the whole day. And then I just don't think about the things that I need to get done because then it's like, oh, what am I supposed to do today? So back a few months ago, before the world changed, uh, I was getting into a good habit of writing down what I wanted to do the next day. Now you out there, you might already do things like this. You might already be an obsessive checklister. You might already know how to attack your day from the night before onward. Uh, I'm a freelancer. I have three or four different types of jobs. And I also am <laughs> a little out there. Like I just, I kind of just go with the flow sometimes, which isn't the best thing for me to do if I want to be forward momentum oriented and productive. So for me, planning in the long term is really necessary. If that's something that you're not doing and you're wondering why you might not be making it further than you already are and where you're at, it might be something to start consider. Just considering. <laughs> and uh, there's many different ways to do it. There's many other great coach sort of people out there. I'm not really here to do that for anybody. I'm just letting you know what I do. And if something rings true with you, by all means, give it a shot. So for me, as always, there's this gratitude journal, uh, trying to at least come up with three things that I'm really appreciative for every morning. Uh, I am appreciative that there are still a couple of grocery stores or bodegas around us that I can get good food at. This pen had a weird thing on it. Good food at local bodegas. <clears throat> Let's see here. Uh, uh, I'm grateful that we figured out the audio issue. So that's been fixed. And I really, I need to do a throwback and I need to just say that I'm grateful for my family. I haven't seen them in a while and I need to get back in touch with them. So mom, Trevor, Taylor, dad, if any of you out there watch this today, I'm grateful for you. And I really need to get back in touch because again, like I was saying, I've been too hard nosed focused on building the show to the point where people don't even know why I'm calling it the show, apparently. And uh, I need to pop my head out and actually have genuine conversations with people. And then my affirmation for today, I am working towards being my best heroic self. So there's my am, I am statement. I am working towards being my best heroic self. Because I don't see why an affirmation can't include the process and not just the result. At least that's me. I've got my day mostly laid out. We're gonna get this routine done around 10. I'm gonna go and edit and upload it. Y'all are gonna have it available for you on YouTube. We're gonna get through a lot of content today. This is gonna be a hardcore workout. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> Again, it's not the level of what Abra does with her hero conditioning, but I am definitely starting to feel it, and I hope you are too. So join me as we get started. 
I'm looking forward to seeing how we all feel at the end of this one. We do have a community question of the day. It's written in my journal, so I just need to remember to get back to that when we get to it. It is 9-11. It's an awkward thing to say out loud. It is one minute after 9-10, and we are going to begin our top-down check-in and flow work. So, I'm going to get up on the left side, because again, for some reason, even though I'm left-handed, I never do that. Get moving that head and neck. Top down. You could always do down to top, but honestly, like, since this is like the CPU, I feel like there's a reason to work this first. So I might like spout off about some weird freaking dreams that I had again, because every once in a while I find them entertaining. If anybody knows me pretty well, they know, like, I'm a big fan of, like, the aliens and predator universes. This is going to be some nerd stuff right here. Last night, I freaking had a dream that, <laughs> and this is probably from playing the Final Fantasy VII remake, that I had to go on, like, some sort of bombing mission with a group of people to, like, stop some crazy organization or something. This is this is the weirdest morning routine chat to have, but whatever, you know. So a lot of times we wake up and we just want to share these crazy dreams we had, right? And uh, <laughs> so we end up going on this mission, and right before we're about to start it, we realize that we have to go on the mission with like a group of like the predators from the Predator movies, and they're all like out of their mind insane. They're like doing crazy blood rituals and everything. This is just bonkers. I'm like, dude, I, I don't want to hang out with those guys. They're crazy. I think I ended up armoring myself with, like, a freaking Miscrema stick or something for this bombing mission. So clearly my priorities were not um, up there with my friendly Yacha warriors, as they're referred to. So, uh, <laughs> there you go, everybody. There's me leading the morning routine show in a brilliant direction with my nerdy, horrible dreams. Well, Matt in Atlantic says good morning to <laughs> the young people, and he's already sore. You got a nine-mile walk in the morning, and things hurt now. I miss the opportunity to walk nine miles. I would love to join you. <sighs> but stay six feet away from me at all times, Matt. And Matt also just said, are those swords and daggers being Dylan multiplying? Uh, they have since the first couple of episodes, yeah. Um, we, uh, we grabbed more and we put more up. We found some wall hanging nail sort of things and we just started putting stuff up. We have not added too many in the last week or two, though. Good eye, though, on you, Matt. I guess this camera's angles today is a little bit more over this way. It's okay. This is okay. That's what I asked for, man. We're trying to line it up with the mat. It makes it easier for me to stay on my mark so that it's easier for Brett to follow it, so it's easier to edit it. Alright. I'm going to finish up with some circular push ups and a little bit of flow. So, if I want to. I can kind of do those, like, people like to think like this is like the beast from that, uh, the Shyamalan movie, but <laughs> just doing these, like, swinging sort of push-ups. I can put one foot forward and switch. And go over and down. So if you see it from the side, I can swing through. I can go up and over. It actually ends up working my leg just a little bit. working through different planes. Now I'm going to go back to what I was doing yesterday. Rock forward, come up, tuck back, come back. And if all this stuff is too much for you and like, a, I don't know, that's a lot of weird stuff sort of way, just do some push-ups or something. Don't hold your plank yet though. <laughs> Save that for when we need to do it together. 
Uh, Adriana says that you should watch the fanfic short of Batman vs. Aliens and Predators. Adriano, man! <laughs> I have watched that a lot. Come on. I sent you the link anyway. Oh, yeah. No, good. Send the link so everybody else can watch it. But yeah, Batman vs. Predator or Aliens or whatever is great. Um, and we have an Anthony today. Oh, hey, Anthony. Good to have you back. Yeah, uh, Adriano, I believe that short was directed by one of the special effects artists or something, because they had all the legit actual costumes. <sighs> yeah, I've been obsessed with that stuff since I was a kid. For those of you out there that don't know, my mom had the brilliant idea of having me watch Terminator 2 when I was five. I saw Batman 1989 in theaters. I was born in 87. I saw it in theaters during its theatrical run. And I'm pretty sure I saw Aliens and Predator when I was six. And now I'm making a basement TV show about working out like an action hero. Thanks, Mom. Grateful for you. All right. Top down checking and flow is done. Let's start busting out that Kung Fu stance set. Real quick note on that, not very important, but I'm gonna give it to you anyways. This is like your kind of traditional, super shortcut kung fu sort of bowing thing. I like it, it's simple. Hand over fist, scholar over warrior. I'm not paying one tribute to another thing or anything like that. If I was to do the salute from my old martial arts school though, it would take a lot longer and it would be kind of confusing. So I might outline that in another video at another time. I'm not gonna go over that today because I'd have to get into the entire history of the Kung Fu school that I came through because it's a very different salutation. So if my teacher watches and goes, why are you doing that? We never did that. It's because I'm just trying to make a shortcut to the idea of Kung Fu. And that's me, so. <laughs> Moving into the stance set. Hopefully you guys are getting something out of this. I know that this helped build my body up in a really great way. We're gonna go right into it. So from hands to the sides, breathe in, breathe out. Let's really focus on the breathing during the stances today. Trace the waist, breathe in, and breathe out. You can actually keep your hands on your hips right here. I forgot that the first two days. Toes, heels, toes are forward. As you sink down, hands come together. So try and use that breathing from the Tai Chi series. I'm breathing in. I'm letting my body settle into the stance. I shift to the left or to the right. I step out. I'm breathing in and I'm breathing out. Shift back and I breathe in. As I lower myself. Shift to the left, and I breathe out as I punch. Bow and arrow stance. I breathe in, I breathe out as I switch to swallow stance. I breathe in, coming up for crane, breathe out. Lower, rise, and now we're going to go into trap, again it's called trap because this foot is empty, we're allowing it to be kind of a bait, you can kick someone in their chest without moving. Sit as low as you can if you want, but can go back a little bit. Twist in, spin the hands around. This will take you right into the opposite side. You can check step if you need to. Or on the ball of the foot or on the toe, it depends on the aesthetic and it depends on the school. Arms are energized, not lazy, energized. Step out, switch through, sit to hold tiger. Let's just breathe for a second here. Hand is guarding groin, hand is guarding head. Breathe and switch. 
Good, from the second hold tiger, press out to the side, scoop down and through, raise up for mantis, well, for spear before mantis, drop down for mantis. Notice how one hand is slightly behind the other. Elbows, bringing them together, because this is a clinch drop, boom, into the knees. Step deep back, see how I have the balls of my feet touching the ground first, then I pull to the heel, press out, swing through, step up to opposite spear. So it's a long fist style, so we get a lot of movement out of it. Turn the hands over, drop down to mantis on this side. Again, we're trying to have this parallel to the ground as best as we can. We're working on holding ourselves up. From here, I'm gonna relax for a second. So those are all the stances we've currently covered. Horse, bow and arrow, swallow, crane, trap, hold tiger, mantis. So last one, there's eight stances in the set, is our twist stance, which we've done something very similar to in our conditioning already. So you see a lot of overlap between the moves and the stances. All these moves are designed to be transitions when fighting. You aren't going to fight somebody and then all of a sudden hold this pose. It's great for a kung fu movie, but that's not reality. But it's going to help you move in these situations and have body conditioning and strength. And that's where the power of the stance sets come from. Again, they're transitions. So when we go from mantis to twist, I'm going to have some trouble because I don't do this all the time anymore. You at home might have a lot of trouble. And if you do, that's totally okay. You can always break out of it and step back in to twist if you need to. From my mantis on this side, I twist around and I hold one hand to my forehead and one hand to my hip. Twist back around the other way, hand to hip, hand to forehead. That's really confusing to look at. That's really confusing in general. So we're going to try and break into it from the back half of the form. So I'm going to start with my first hold tiger. I'm going to breathe in, settle down, transition over, press out, Scoop through to rise for spear, drop down for mantis. Step back and press out, scoop through, raise up for spear, drop down to mantis. Now the first question I'm asking myself is which direction do I turn to start? If I go this way, I'm facing that direction. If I go this way, I'm facing that direction but I'm twisted up. So I'm going to assume that we're going to turn towards the foot that's bent and face out. What you'll see is you'll see one knee is into the calf. I'm guarding at the head. Ah, okay, this makes more sense. So let's look at the stance. Guarding at the head and I'm loaded with the hand. And when I turn back the other way, it's the opposite hand to the opposite hip. Now you can do this from all the way up here, or you can do this from all the way down here. You can do either. It's all what you're capable of. It's a hard stance to nail, especially in the form. So what I really want you to focus on is just, I've already got this one leg back, turn through and look behind you, hand and hip. Honestly, at this point, I need to research a little bit more and get back to figuring out which hand is on the hip and which hand is on the head. It's been a little bit. But 
you want to keep that coil energy going anyways. So it doesn't necessarily matter which one's there for this move because they're going to switch if you're playing with the form regardless. I'm not exactly doing my best at being a traditional student right now. But it has been many moons. I believe this is correct. And here's why I can tell you. If I go in this direction and I twist in, this hand's on the hip and this hand's on the head. So I want to feel like I'm pulling with this hand as it's the lead. And this, like when we do our dragon twist in the conditioning, would come up off the body. So it would be, I'd be here, I'd be firing out. But we keep it on the hip for the form. So from Mantis, turn, stay low, turn back the other way, stay low. And now we'll finish up the form as best as I can remember it. Whew, that rust. I'm low. Let's just say we start from the second twist, or no, we'll start from Mantis. Twist one, staying as low as you feel comfortable. This heel can be up. This heel can be up too, but that's gonna be hard for a lot of people. Twist two, sitting low. Now, to close, we open up to horse. We fire that punch, we bring it to our hip, we step together, we rise up, we let our hands down, and we bow. That much I'm pretty sure I remember correctly. So let's just finish that up one last time. We won't do the whole form today. Go back to the beginning and watch the beginning and then skip to this part. <laughs> Tomorrow we'll do the whole form all the way through probably three times. You'll bring a sweat. <laughs> From Mantis, turn into twist. Notice how the elbow, ah, I discovered another thing just by doing it, right? The elbow is off the body and the fist is coming out from the side of the body. I turn back around the other way, boom. It's coming off the body, like a nice little uppercut. I finish off, shifting over with a block, checking with a punch, returning to the hip, stepping together, standing up, releasing the energy down, breathing out, bowing slightly. So that's the last little bit of details. Again, I kind of showed multiple variations on where the hands are supposed to be in the twist stance. Maybe that'll actually help you remember it better than I just did right now. But the goal is that the hip that turns into the strike propels the hand. So you want to attach that elbow to that hip and the hand that goes first is pulling so you get that nice shape. And then when I come back around the other way, pull and punch. Brett, you can't do the wobbly finger thing while I'm holding a stance. It's going to throw me off, man. He just wants me to finish up. And we're done. <laughs> stance set for day 26 is an absolute nightmare. But day 27, we're going to have it really nice and clean. I promise. All right. That's it for our Kung Fu technique tutorial with our long fist stance set. I see like a lot of people are chatting me up. Yes, the director was Sandy Corona, who used to work with Stan Winston. Thank you, Adriano. I think there's a connection. I don't know to what, Anthony, but sure. Wendy, see y'all later. Meeting ends in like 10. It's supposed to, I might pop up back in then. And we had a couple more people join. Well, thank you all for jumping in. Let me just go very quickly to announce the community question of the day. Before we get into Plank Clam. Ah, okay. Yes? What? You're just giving me looks, man. I feel really pressured today, man. Oh, it's already after 9.30, that's why. <laughs> Alright, let's just breathe in and breathe out, bro. 
Okay, don't throw that at me. Okay, cool. Question of the day. As far back as you would like to go, who is a family member or ancestor? So this could be your great, 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 whatever. Who you feel connected to through an inherited trait or quality. Like if there was a story passed down or something like that about, well, am I great, 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 etc., etc. did the bop, bop, bopity, bop. Oh yeah, I always think about that. And then what is that like trait or quality? And we've asked about similar things before, but this question of the day is kind of like inheritance. What have you inherited from the past that you feel connected to? Now, if that's not your bag, if you don't feel that connected to your family, rock on. We've talked about fictional and non-fictional heroes. We've talked about your personal traits and everything like that. But really try and think of somebody that's influenced you if you cannot think about uh, specifically your family tree. Because I can tell you straight up, I don't know a whole lot about my ancestry. I think it'd be kind of cool to know about it. I think I know more about Brett's ancestors than I know about my own at this point, just because he knows a lot about his own. That should say a lot. If family's important to you, let us know what you have to say. And if it's not your bag, say something else. Ask another question. We're here as a community and we're just trying to share some cool stories. All right, let's -a go to Plank Land. Getting my timer set up. And we're not gonna screw this one up today. I'm going to go for my 40 seconds. Actually, at this point, I need to go for my 45s. No more cheating. All right, I'm going straight into 45. You all can let go if you need to. I gotta push myself a little bit extra today, especially since I've been such a jerk to Brett. And I'm gonna do my lows to highs to lows. Look forward to seeing some of those answers by the end of the show. Stretching out my body as long as I can so that I can feel more effective in this crunch. And smiling and breathing all the way through. Now what I notice is that if I lower my hips just a little bit, I have to squeeze more in the back of my legs to hold the posture. So if I'm not crunching at the abs, then I'm squeezing through the glutes and the hamstrings to hold this posture out. And those are the kind of things that become really cool to start noticing once you really start diving deep into something like this. What am I activating? What part of the body am I sending the tension through? Uh, what am I using to support the posture? I'm getting up a little bit early on these for some reason. I think I must hate myself. I mean, I know I must hate myself, but you know. Trying to love myself more, damn it. That's why I'm doing all these planks. To show myself self-love. Just join me for some relaxing planks first thing in the morning. <sighs> All right, I'm gonna go into my high planks, like Wendy was saying a couple days ago. Where the fingertips are pointed can change this feeling of this exercise drastically. I'm gonna try and put them straight out. And I'm gonna try and reach, reach for the sky. Even activating a little bit through the rear foot. Just a little bit. Oh boy. Sweaty morning. Just trying to challenge and push myself just a little bit. I'm not going like full super yoga guy. I ain't there yet. Not for 45 seconds. Oh boy. 
Whoop, whoop, whoop. Ah, ah. Almost fell. <sighs> Are you all enjoying these as much as I am? Dylan's weird. He's a weird host. He doesn't take the show seriously enough. He's really goofy. Yeah. Y'all are the ones watching. <clears throat> to be honest, I mean, I don't think I could do this if I wasn't trying to be my genuine, goofy, bizarre, over the top, ridiculous, non sequitur self. My morning routine should be also considered under the genre of theater of the absurd. It is, Varner Herzog likes to say, it is my ecstatic truth. I haven't killed Brett just yet, but I did get a head shake out of him. The Saga Live Show, starring Reynolds and Herzog. It's a Brett and Mines joke. We want to do a, a fitness show starring Ryan Reynolds and Werner Herzog, where they're just best buddies and they just live together. If somebody can communicate this idea to those guys and get it to happen, I don't need to be involved. I just want to see it. For those of you that don't know, it would basically be Deadpool and the bad guy to the first Jack Reacher movie. It's what you would see. Brett, we're watching Jack Reacher. You still haven't seen it, right? Yeah, you gotta get on that. Tom Cruise at his hammy best. He knows what he's doing in that movie. During his brief period of absolute self-awareness. Werner Herzog totally knows what he's doing in that movie. <laughs> and Jai Courtney, as much as I love him, does his best work because he doesn't say very much. He just stands there and looks incredibly pretty <laughs> while being a bad guy. It's also a movie that rings true to me because they use Keezy fighting method style techniques in those films. And obviously I grew up on those with my martial arts journey. And now of all the actors that could be doing KFM, Tom Cruise is actually the right build and body type to be doing it. <sighs> and everybody's favorite sound. All right. That was a lot of random nonsense over the course of Plank Land. Woo. Thank you all for putting up with that. Yeah, Anthony, if you ever want to learn it. I was only ranked up to white grade, but I was a really, really, really uh, uh, involved and intense student in the school that I was at. And with everything else I've learned, I've kind of like extrapolated a lot of the ideas. And it definitely worked for me when I went to Southern Violence with Kelly McCann. It was one of the only things that I was able to really pull off in a lot of my live fights, so. Uh, Aubrey and I like to throw it into our conditioning and our training and our CQC every once in a while. All right, moving along. We're gonna go into our, what is it, is it Kung Fu conditioning now? Sure, <laughs> Brett's like, sure, whatever, yeah. <laughs> I think it's Kung Fu conditioning time. Today, Again, focusing on four intermediate moves. The basics are great. If you want to go back to doing those, rock on. If you want to try and keep up with these, keep going. In the basics, it was the brush floors. In the intermediates, we're going to be doing the reverse punch. 60-40 stance. Hand comes up. Pull in. Punch out. We're going to do this today. Hmm. Well, let's just do it 10 times on each side. Beat out 20 of these moves. Ready? Breathe in. One. 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Other side. Get through those fast once you start doing them fast. Bring it back in. Second move, spring leg. I'm going to step off the mat because that thing is screwing me up a lot. You have many different ways of doing it. Here's how we're going to do it as a conditioning workout. I breathe in, raise the knee to my chest, breathe out, <sighs> tight and intense, set back just a little bit. And then bring it back in and down. Breathe in, out, and back down. Hands can be open, close for the kick. Ten times each side. Focus on that breathing pattern, it will help. Think of it like creating a metronome. Ready? Let's go. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. That's <sighs> pumping. All right, tiger lunges, whatever they're supposed to be called, I'm gonna call them when I call them. What you'll notice is that I'm bringing the hands up and then opening them out. In this case, I'm making fists and then opening them to hands. It's a little bit of the opposite of the previous workout. So I come up, and I go down. I come up, and I go down. Let's do 20 of these total, all right? Let's do it. Ready? Begin. One. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Last move, dragon twist. Unlike the twist stance, we're going to extend this punch. It's kind of like a reverse punch, only in this case we are throwing the lead hand. Easiest way to start, steel step, which just means stealing the step by doing a half step, punching out. So even though this is technically the lead leg, the foot is in the rear, but the hip is across my body, so it's still my lead leg. I'm punching from the lead leg. I draw it in, I punch from the lead leg, hand cover. As you draw in, there was one really great goof that I did. I kind of bring the fist, brought the fist around. We want to train that spiral. 
So suck that fist back in as you turn and then extend the other one out. So you train on coiling in place. Today, since we gotta move on, let's just do 10 of these total, all right? Step across, punch out, and begin. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. Kung Fu Intermediate exercises are done for now. <sighs> A new level of sweat has been achieved. I feel like I'm digivolving. Dylan Mon became slightly sweatier. Dylan Mon. <sighs> Busting out that clock. Going to get through some of these Savat leg holds. Setting the timer back down to 30. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to stretching. Propping it up. And getting ready to go. Again, I'm going to be off the floor for this one. Because I found that I get to work on different things. And I don't have to worry about the squishy mat. Alright. A little bit of bounce from the hip chamber. I don't have to raise it super high up. I can if I want to. And again, I'm going to shut up. Focus on your breathing. Become really natural with it. Have an intent with your gaze. Don't just like, I mean, yeah, looking around the room is important to build up that unconscious activity. But so is like trying to focus an intent at some point. Either way, you don't want to be in panic mode just because you're hopping on one foot as well. For me, like, I'm training this intent of watching another fighter move left and right. So I'm kind of building up this mentality that I'm tracking them. Like, this is my reticle. Like in a video game. I'm like, okay. Um, Kaylin has a move on the comfort that is long, so. Yeah, she has a question about it? Yeah, she has a question. We'll get into it then. Yeah, after, after we're done with our salats. Glad to have any questions sent in. So thank you, Caitlin. And thank you, Brett, for reading that at me. We'll get to it soon. But for now, prep the chasse. So you notice how I'm crunched in a little bit here. I don't necessarily have that full upright body. If I want to bring that knee to my chest, coming in close is good. If I do want to bring my chest up and try and raise the knee, it's another element that I'm working on. Posture here, pull here, rather than just full crunch. Again, though, you can do either for right now. But if you can experiment with both, experiment being here, at that full supported torso, or here, crunching into it. Feel that difference and learn about that difference. Learn what you're putting together in terms of those biomechanical puzzle pieces. Stretching out just a little bit. All right, and we're up on the other side. Wow, we're almost done with day 26. It's like it's been a full month or something. And we're still got more to go. Almost there. Chasse front tall. It's an important kick. It shows up in almost every martial arts system as something else. Just like how we noticed it was in our spring leg. All right, that's going down. Last two rounds, holding that fuete position. Fuete being the whip kick. And again, this is the really cool part. If I kind of keep my torso relaxed and everything, you'll see me bend in a little bit. If I fire my glutes in my lower back, boom, it pops open. And now I'm feeling that pull. I'm feeling that activate. I want that feeling. 
I want to have those back muscles supporting this posture. All right, let that down. I'd really love to see some pictures of some of you guys holding that pose. I want to be able to share them with the United States Sabat Federation and show that we're spreading a little bit of that Sabat training to some people. Send me some pictures, yo. Send pics. I definitely feel way stronger with this than I did on day one. Uh, Asia has a question as well. So I have two questions. Fantastic, can't wait to answer them. All right, everybody's favorite sound. We're gonna go into our stretch set. I'll answer some of these questions. And then we'll move right into our community question and answer of the day. Thank you all for your patience. We're almost at the end now. a little bit closer. Caitlin, on the move that we do before the tiger lunges, where we lift the leg and lean back, I forget the name. I am referring to that as spring leg. Spring leg is a translation of tantui. Tantui is a kung fu style. I call it more than a form. Uh, it's a system that focuses on the springiness of the legs leading into the punches. It tends to show up in long fist systems. And it was supposedly developed by, this is what I am understanding of, Chinese Muslim bodyguards. So it was really, really badass. Now aside from that, isn't it important that the bottom of the foot is seen and flat like in Savat and not pointed in ballet? Great question. Uh, my answer to that would be, I believe we were striking with the ball of the foot more in that system. I could be wrong. So that's a great question. If you want to treat it more like a teep from Muay Thai and ask Abra about how to set up your foot in that way, absolutely viable. If you want to do it with a flexed foot and showing the flat of the foot like in the Savat, totally good too for now. The main thing I want you to focus on is the lengthening of the leg and it being powered by the dropping in of the hips. As you tilt back, your hips are pushing forward. So you're powering the kick, not with the quad, but with the hips and the upper body. That's where the weight drop is coming in from. So whether you want to do that with the ball of the foot, I wouldn't recommend doing it with the toes necessarily, but if you want to flex the toes and do it with the ball of the foot, or if you want to do it with the heel, I think either is acceptable in how we're going about it for our conditioning routine. Uh, a traditional martial arts teacher might have a different opinion. I am teaching a traditional martial art as a methodology for conditioning. I'm not teaching you just the traditional martial art uh, for the sake of preservation. I'm trying to put it out there. And if you have an interest, I would implore you to explore these arts with someone with a much more in-depth, traditional, inherited background than I. Uh, consider me like a stepping stone into that experience. Aisha, just finished yesterday's hero workout. Was there a question of the day? Uh, the hero workouts don't have questions of the day. That's a good question. Uh, we just kind of cut to the chase on those and then we do a little bit of community chat at the end. Uh, yesterday's morning routine had a question of the day and right at this moment, I don't remember what it was. Does Brett remember what it was? Kind of went into a bit of it. Um, it's go into your ancestry. No, no, but yesterday's. Yesterday's. Yeah, yesterday's. That was the. Oh wait, is Aisha? Aisha, are you asking about what is today's question of the day? Oh, she's probably asking about what today's. Is. Yeah. So as Brett was just saying, what were you saying? What you we went to your ancestry? Is there a member of your family that? Mm. Um, that you essentially uh, take something from, yeah. take some of your qualities from, to learn something from. It's a little complex, but... So if I had to simplify it, I would say 
Think back in your family timeline. Is there anybody that came before you that you feel you have a connection to that you might not have even known, that you might just know of? And is there a trait or something that you feel you may have inherited from them? So if like your great, 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 great grandmother was Joan of Arc and you inherited visions and the ability to like slaughter dozens of men, have at it. Or if you just want to think back to like your great uncle that you heard about and he was really stern but hardworking and he accomplished a lot and you think about, well, maybe I inherited some of those traits from that side of the family. Those are the kind of things that we're talking about. How do you connect to the past? And again, it's not something I'm particularly super great at for myself, so I really need to try and investigate that a little bit more. I have quite a few actual uncles that I don't want to have many traits from at all. And then I have a few that I would really love to have traits from. And then further and further back. No, sorry for this morning's. I jumped in late here. Totally wonderful, Aisha. Sorry that I did not pick up what you were putting down immediately. Lisa Christmas, Rose, Becca, Taylor, Elizabeth Taylor. Oh, hey, Liz. Thanks for showing up. Hmm, that's cool that she's in here. So send us in some answers. Send us in some questions. This is the part of the video where we just chat and chill, stretch out a little bit. We finished all of our conditioning. Oh. We just share some stuff. We just talk to each other. I never knew either of my grandfathers. They were both gone before I was born. So I never had that like granddad on a fishing trip experience. Uh, I've met one of my great uncles, I think. He was nice. Uh, interrupting you for a moment. Um, what time do you stream every day? Morning is 9 a.m. Eastern time to 10 a.m. Eastern time. Thank you, Liz. Uh, so... <laughs> and, and it is nine days and then one day off. Right. Just to reiterate, as Brett was saying, the morning routine show is 9 a.m. every day until the 10th day of every cycle. So we go on a nine-day cycle, and then on the 10th day, it's up to the participants to do their own thing. Whether that is to just take the day off, or whether that is to maintain their own version of a morning routine, it's totally up to them. I believe it should be an opportunity for people to try and stay on their own stuff without the accountability of the stream to uh, hold them accountable. We have an afternoon hero conditioning workout, hosted usually by Abra Burkett, and that is at 1 p.m. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And we have our skill development sessions, which is basically our martial arts class, every Tuesday, Thursday at 7 p.m. And these are all Eastern time. So thank you for asking. <sighs> Do we have any answers to today's question? I know it's kind of a, one of those ones that's a little bit out there. Maybe people are just typing up really big responses, which would make sense because it's a really big question. Brett, how about you? Yeah, but why don't you tell me? And even if they can't hear you, I'll speak it back. Who's an ancestor that you feel really connected to? Uh, there are a couple. Um, a funny thing I learned was that one of my great-grandfathers from like World War II times, he was super into film. Oh, really? Yeah, he like he had a projector. Your great-grandfather, who was in World War II, had a projector? One of my great-grandfathers. Oh, wow. I believe, I believe it was a great-grandfather. I don't know if it was great-great or great-grandfather, but he was super into film. Um, huh. that I did not learn about until I needed to get into uh, the film program at Towson University. Oh wow, so is that like you part of your application write, essay? Yeah, you had to write an essay to get in. Wow. It was not a huge program. Um, yeah. And uh, some things from 
uh, some things from different different sects of my family. Something that you feel like I get a little bit from each of them. Like uh, the some things from my grandfather. That's uh, the Germanness, the directness. The the Germanness of your family, the directness that you guys get with your uh, German temperament, as it were. Yes, essentially. You've got some answers now. Cool. Well, thanks, Brett. I didn't know that. that you'll have to figure out more about your grandfather. And uh, it's nice to know that there were like film buffs all the way back in World War II that weren't just Michael Fassbender. Yes. <laughs> Caitlin, my uncle who died in a plane crash loved music. Maybe my love of theater was inspired by his love for music. Other than that, it is hard to say. Both my grandfathers were gone, but I did have both my grandmothers. Awesome. Wendy, I found out several years ago that my great-great-grandfather was part owner of a circus, and when he and my great-great-grandmother were young, or my great-grandmother, I'm adding too many greats to these things, but I'm sure they're great, uh, they were performers. Family legend holds that my great-grandfather did horseback tricks in the Wild West, in Wild West shows, and my great-grandmother did trapeze and high wire, supposedly while pregnant with my grandfather. All right, we got to find some, like, pics or like some like footage or something. I'm sure Brett's grandfather probably had footage of your grand great grandparents doing circus routines. Who knows? That's freaking awesome though. That totally explains a lot about you, Wendy. I believe it. Oh, we got a lot of friends jumping in right now. Again, we're just finishing up the routine, so if you're jumping in at the end, the video will be posted to YouTube later so that you can do the workout alongside of us. We just like to host these community Q&As to get to know everybody involved. If you'd like to contribute an answer, even if it's your first time, please feel encouraged. We are asking about members of your ancestry who did something or were a certain way that you feel connected to over time. And for me, I honestly, I don't know anything about my great grandparents, and I've got to try and research that. I've really got to try and dig back into my past. I feel like in some ways it helps you kind of plant a flag in the present. It just makes for cool stuff. You know? When Wendy and Caitlin's stories are both very um, passionate in the sense that, you know, they were about things that their ancestors loved to do and how they're wondering, hmm, maybe I get this from that. Maybe this is just part of my heritage. Anybody else as we finish up? <clears throat> Only going to go for a couple more minutes. We even got to hear from Brett today, which was really cool. I should probably ask him the questions more often. Adriano, I know nothing about my family beyond two generations. My father used to work day and night on the newspaper he was running. Your father ran a newspaper. That's pretty cool. I took some of his work ethic example to heart and I think compassion from my mother. Beyond that, I knew only my grandmother and nothing else. Well, hey, I mean, at least you got something cool from your dad. And if your mom was really compassionate, I think that says a lot probably about why you're able to take some time off from your hard work and join us for these morning routines and take care of yourself and be involved with this community. So thank you for sharing. What was the newspaper? Aisha, at a family reunion many years ago, I met a cousin who did burlesque in her day. She was in her 60s when I met her. Awesome. I had recently started doing burlesque when I met her, so we had an immediate connection. That is really cool. And I think there's something really awesome when that kind of wild side of the family, and wild side, you know, we get it, um, is someone that you randomly connect with, but you're bound by blood, so it's kind of like, yeah, we're not gonna judge each other, and this is actually this really cool thing that just kind of like rippled out through the waves. You can feel, I, I can imagine like, yeah, I think if I had like a relative that was really into film or martial arts or something like that, of which I've had almost none except for my mother, uh, and she wasn't ever into martial arts, but it would, it would mean a lot to me to be able to just immediately feel comfortable talking about something that I was passionate about. So that's really awesome. That's a great story. My father ran a small local newspaper on the countryside of Brazil. He lived and died for it. Dude. That's a story. When are you going to turn that one into a comic? 
That could be really cool. And Josh is in the chat, but I don't know if he's going to be telling us anything. I'm sure he's working on it. I love all these answers. I love getting to know all of you. This is so much better than me just like sitting around talking about work, 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 work. I had to be provoked a little bit, I suppose. I'm first generation American, says Anthony Barnes. As far as I know, my father is the greatest man to whom I am related. Immigrant, excellent student, loved by most if not all people, and a man of God. It's a lot to look up to. Good for you. <laughs> and I'm sure you're going to follow right in those footsteps. After all, I certainly don't hate you yet. Anthony. Barnes. It's wonderful. Yeah, as I was saying, you know, just kind of like to piggyback on this whole thing about talking about these little random things. It's really, really, really nice. Um, one of the things that, and I might be shooting myself in the foot here, but one of the things I always felt a little bit disconnected from in the film industry is that it was very hard for me to talk to my contemporaries about anything other than work. So the fact that you all join us and I ask questions like this and I get to know a little bit about you is really cool. So I feel like this whole morning routine has kind of helped me really get better at being in touch with other people, even though, ironically enough, we're all separated by the social distancing. If you ever like these questions and you just want to like hit up a friend on the day that you hear it or something, and you just want to ask them, yo, what's, what, what's your answer to this question? I answered this question in this live stream and blah, 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 and we had a cool chat. Take them. I don't know if that would help you in any way, but it certainly would help me. Maybe I'll just start asking my mom all these questions. I wish she would jump in and answer them. All right. <clears throat> Going to start wrapping up. If we get another comment, I'll try and read it. Tomorrow's question is a little bit more interesting, I think. Although this one went in really awesome places. Uh, we have a lot of eyeballs on this one today, so I really appreciate everybody must have been sharing super hard recently or, uh, you know, the link must be getting out there. We just put a ton of work into our YouTube channel to try and make sure that every video is available, searchable, hashtagged, and everything. Um, I spent a lot of yesterday doing that. Brett and I have been focused really hard on trying to make sure that we upgrade the audio quality as much as possible so that when people go to watch this, they don't have to turn up their volume all the way. In fact, you might be able to turn it down. We are literally spending almost every hour of every day trying to focus on making this the best show possible. Uh, all that being said, I am willing to drop this little bit of a truth bomb to everybody that's in this chat. The current plan is to keep the show going until the end of April. And right now there are no plans to keep it going for longer at this time. So we really want everybody to keep joining in and follow along with us till the end of this journey. If you're interested in being a part of this and you wanna catch up, I just recommend skipping through a couple of the episodes on YouTube and seeing if this is for you. By the time we get to April 30th, hopefully the world will be a little bit different. Back to normal, new normal, whatever it is. But I'm really proud of us as a group for putting some stuff out there and contributing to maintaining each other's sanity and becoming friends. So thank you all for joining us uh, today. I'm gonna wrap up with the last little bit of the spiel. If you're watching us on Facebook and you really like what we're doing, or if you've ever trained with us before, please consider writing a review for us on Facebook. We will probably be considering that a testimonial that we would love to share and help promote what we're doing with other people. What we would really love from you, especially if you've written a review, is some sort of selfie or photo taken by someone you live with or something like that, or a, a video that we can grab a still frame of, of you training, whether that's from the morning routine or the hero conditioning or the skill development. We want to be able to share these testimonials with awesome photos of you. Because you are our action heroes. You are our Avengers. It's pretty much what you guys are for me. You're our superhero team. Lastly, again, please go on the YouTube channel, like and subscribe to the videos. We're trying to pump that up. If we can get to 100 subscribers by the end of the week, that would be glorious. I'm not expecting it, but it would be so cool. And uh, yeah, find us on our Instagram and start using that hashtag. Hashtag the saga community.
because that's how we want to be able to keep up with you keeping up with us. We'll have our skill development session tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern, and then tomorrow it will be morning routine at 9, and Abra's conditioning workout, hero conditioning, at 1 p.m. So until then, hmm? East, I said Eastern. Eastern, 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 Eastern. Actually, one of our shows will be Eastern time, and another one will be Western time, and one of them will be Midwest time because they change every show. Okay, Brett's going to kill me now. All right, from me to you at the Saga Action Arts Studio, thank you for being a part of our community. We will see you later tonight, or I'll see you tomorrow. Either way, have a great day. Bye-bye for now.